I'll tell you a little about myself. Um, I've been a master plumber for 14 years. Um, been a plumber for almost 23 years. I started when I was 14 years old. I've seen just about every kind of bathroom and every kind of remodel job that went on from good jobs to bad jobs. Um, my own mistakes included. Yeah, um, I am human. I did my, we had funny stories about myself too. So um, I'll be more than happy to share them as we go. Um, I'll tell you what not to do and this is what I did. Um, I'm also a do-it-yourselfer. Um, I've done a lot of tiling jobs. Um, I've built three houses now. Um, I've just about seen just about every aspect of the construction field. Um, the economy is what it is. Um, everybody's kind of fixing up their own bathrooms to their own house. Um, everybody's got questions, myself included. I've been told never to touch sheetrock again in my life. Um, <laughs> plumbing comes naturally to me, so. Um, where, when somebody first comes up to me and they say, you know what, I'd like to remodel my bathroom. I often say, do you have an idea? Can you picture it in your head what you want it to look like? And a lot of times they go, no, I never even thought of it. Um, remodeling is a lot easier and whether you're looking at catalogs, pictures, have an idea. It makes your job go a lot smoother. Um, know what kind of finishes on fixtures you want. Um, just have a rough idea. Have a notebook and jot ideas down. It gives you a great idea, a great game plan to actually achieve what you want to achieve. A lot of people get into their remodel job, they're working, they're working, they're working, they're tired, and all of a sudden they get burnt out, and then it sits. There's nothing more frustrating than that, especially to your spouse that you're trying to impress. <laughs> so I do, I have a four-year job that um, I just finished tonight, and she finally said thank you. So I'm guilty of it myself. Um, when I first get remodeling, depending on the scope of what you're trying to do, um, some people want a very quick, easy uh, upgrade to different finishes, the different fixtures. The easiest thing to do is to change the color of the most wonderful thing in the bathroom, the faucets, the light fixtures, the handles, the door accessories. Um, change the color, paint it. Um, some people want to go a little further. They want to retile. They want to gut it. Um, and I can ask if anybody has any questions. Um, some people don't like touching plumbing at all. Um, I do offer a lot of advice to people when they run into a problem and they don't know what to do. They're pulling their hair out. Um, I literally get, I've done this class three times now. Um, they take my name, they come and see me. I can offer advice all day long. Um, what I can't do is I can't go out to your job site and actually do the job for you. So, simple bath remodeling. First things first, um, if it's a big job, sometimes a dumpster is greatly helpful um, to actually get rid of the debris. A lot of people like to pile it up in their driveway uh, or in their front yard, make some wonderful yard ornaments. Um, plan for it. Um, get rid of the things you want to get rid of right away. Um, sometimes having all the debris, um, let's say your old toilet, your old cabinet, your old top, your old faucets, your old tile, piling up in the bathroom is nothing but aggravating. So what I tell people is, first things first, let's get rid of the stuff you don't want. 
If you don't want that cabinet, you don't want that sink, you don't want that tub, let's get it out. Let's get a fresh look at it. Clean it up. Let's, you have to evaluate as the job goes on. You will find things that you're not planning for. That's remodeling. Um, first things first, um, people like to come in and they go, I like a new trap. First thing I ask them is, what's their size? Traps come an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Um, depends on when your house was built. Um, the inch and a quarter was very popular, the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, and even early 70s. It was because of price. You can see a huge difference in size. One's inch and a half, one's inch and a quarter. Nowadays, we don't use this. We just use the inch and a half. It doesn't clog as easy. It makes life very simple. But then people say, well, the drain coming down from the sink is always inch and a quarter. How can I make that adapter? In every trap, there's a little lovely washer called an inch and a half to inch and a quarter adapter. There's little tricks to the trades here. Um, So if this is an inch and a quarter drain and we've got an inch and a half trap, it literally kind of just plugs in. And maybe some people, do we anybody have any ideas of projects that's up and coming? They have a question right away? Maybe I'm skipping over something. Yes? Sure. Absolutely. I will try. <laughs> um, so that washer, like I was saying, it literally adapted it from the inch and a quarter to the inch and a half. And just by me tightening it, it literally snugs it up. What most people do wrong when they're changing out or they have a leak on their traps is they don't get new seals. You can buy new seals for like a dollar each. And that's why most traps actually leak. Um, they don't tighten them up um, with new seals. The other biggest thing is these loosen up about every six months. From anybody know why? Hot and cold water is expansion and contraction. They loosen up. If it's metal, if it's um, plastic, plastic is a little more prone, but it does work well. And all you have to do is literally just get under there and just grab it, turn it, tighten it. Anybody doing tiling in their bathroom? Okay. How many people have the old cast iron clawfoot tub that they like to get rid of? Um, are we doing projects where we're the, or clawfoot or cast iron? Yep, yep, yep. Um, you can actually. Yeah, absolutely. They're worth about $100 each in scrap metal. Um, it depends on where you bring it. I'd call around. Um, anybody have an idea on how to get those out of the house? Wear safety glasses and gloves. Wear protection. That porcelain on there comes off like razor blades. Um, Fours, twos, threes, um, yeah, it does come out. It's a lot more manageable getting out. Um, the, when people like to replace their tub, they think that they can maybe just take out a couple inches all the way around the tub and that would be suffice. Um, no, a lot of times you're doing a lot more remodeling than you're anticipating. Um, the faucets, the tubs, how many people have two-handle tub and shower valves? Have you shopped around trying to find out um, where you can get replacements in different colors? Um, the two-handle faucet is no longer code. Um, they do actually um, still allow it. If you do any certain percentage of your bathroom, if it's over, uh, I believe it's 50 or 60%, they ask you to get this up to code. These are not anti or posi temp or anti scald have you ever been in that shower somebody flushes a toilet in another bathroom and all of a sudden you get a nice either hot shower or really really cold the two handles and three handles don't have that um, the only way you can get that faucet so it doesn't burn you or freeze you you got to go to a one handle faucet now some people have their tile they have three holes in there or two holes from their old faucet they say, well, I just retiled that bathroom, but I'd like to get it up to code. I'd like to make it so I enjoy my shower a little more often. There is wonderful remodeling plates. And what it does is it covers the three holes. It's about $12. You can switch those out relatively easily. Um, you need an access hole from the back to actually work on the plumbing, though. Um, but it does save your tile. Wonderful, wonderful little tricks. 
Um, how many people have changed out a vanity sink and they went to replace it either with a larger one or a smaller one and then they realized things just don't line up and they're buying this flexible trap adapter or this flexible little joint. The cities don't allow those. Those are an accident waiting to happen. Um, what we tell people is you want to line up the drain in the wall to the actual drain assembly for the actual bathroom faucet. You line them up, you have a wonderful time putting everything back together. When they're off, we call it a window of opportunity, six inches. Um, the traps actually pivot, and people like to replace things exactly how their old one was. If they've seen it where it's coming out of the wall and it's looking very, very straight. What people don't realize is it's okay. You can actually turn it sideways. You can extend this out left or right. You can also they sell them in 45s. It makes life very, very simple. Anybody have an idea what this is or what I call this? Most homeowners third trip to the hardware store. <laughs> the elevations between your old vanities to your new vanities, sometimes there's differences there. It makes a wonderful extension if you're too low, if you're too high. The drains coming down for whether it's your kitchen, your laundry tub, your bathroom sink. People always say, I should have listened to you, I should have grabbed this. And I'm like, oh, it is. Now, how many people have that older house where they have the cast iron piping in their house? And they've always wondered, how do you make those adaptions or conversions over to the PVC? They're metal pipes. Um, Home Depot sells, Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, Ace Hardware. Everybody sells these, what's called a mission coupling. It adapts the metal pipe to a PVC pipe or ABS, whichever you choose. Um, it's okay to go right on the threads. I forgot to bring one. I had a couple other things I grabbed instead. Um, anybody know why they call it a mission coupling? Because you're on a mission to join two dissimilar materials. Plumbing's very simple. The people who came up with these names didn't really put a lot of thought into it. It just <laughs> is what it is. You'll find a lot of funny names and things in plumbing. Um, the other thing, people, when they have their drain or their trap, and it's not lining up. Let's just pretend this is coming straight out of the wall and we're trying to get into this trap. You gotta know the pipe size, for one, to get the right trap. Inch and a half does not go into inch and a quarter, it's just laws of physics. Um, but if their drain is off, people wanna buy that accordion style little adapter. We do have 45s that we can glue on or screw back on and we can actually change the route of where that trap is going. We don't have to usually remove any of the pipes. We can actually just add a new one and we can actually convert back to a new trap. It is a little bit simpler than people think. Um, the other thing is, before you start putting all the metal pipes onto metal pipes, get the mission coupling. It's about $5. It literally will save you hours and frustration and, and some hair in my head. Um, very wonderful, very easy. Um, any questions so far? Yes, ma'am. When you put the, the, any of those couplings or the mission coupling, do you yep. have to seal the new... Uh, they actually have what's called a hose clamp, and a hose clamp is um, it's literally a stainless steel ring with a uh, nut on the end that you tighten with a screwdriver or a wrench or a socket, um, and it literally squeezes right onto the pipe, whether there's thread there, whether there's no thread there. Um, I wish I would have bought one. Uh, let's move on to um, toilets or sink repair or sink installation. Maybe that's a better way of going. Anybody have an idea what they would call this spread for a bathroom sink? There's two different kinds, four inch on center and eight inch on center. Very vital that you know that. It helps you choose the right faucet. Well, that could have been prepared. I know where this is going to wind up, so I'm automatically putting it on the floor where it's going to go. Is 
anybody changed out faucets in here before? Okay. One of the best inventions ever to be made by the plumbing industry are the flexible water lines. Now people always ask me, what do I need to put these in? You literally need a wrench and a little bit of smarts. Um, there's a rubber washer in all of these. A lot of people have the directly connected faucet right up, or direct hard pipe water lines right up to the faucet. Replace them with these, it's so much simpler. Um, it is code, it is vital to every city since about 1970 to actually have shutoff valves underneath your sinks. It makes life very simple in case you run into that trouble and you have to shut down the entire house. If you have these under there, they literally um, make it so you can just shut just that fixture off. Now there's two different types here. Some of them have what's called the football handle. This one doesn't, it's literally um, a chrome handle. The football handle is shape of a football. Um, anybody have bad water pressure in one particular fixture or sink? Um, it's normally due to either the, the valve underneath or the supply line. Cities have um, cast iron galvanized water mains. Um, they like to decompose from the inside out. There's flakes, there's all kinds of wonderful things dissolved within water. These plug up very, very simply, very easily, slowly diminishing your water pressure. These also can collect. The new ones that are quarter turn, they actually have done their homework. These don't fail like those old football handle ones. Um, so if you, have, if you look underneath your sink and you have a handle that looks like a football, if you haven't moved it in a few years, two, three, five, ten, you might want to consider moving it just to check to see if it actually moves. A lot of times they get frozen in the open position and then they always say, well, why isn't it shutting off? Well, the debris has literally landed right on the flat washer. It just keeps collecting, it just keeps building up. Next thing you know, they're not working. They don't shut off. And then you're shutting off the whole entire house. Um, so if you are looking to replace them, do the quarter turn valve. It's a much, much better valve. It doesn't fail like the old ones did. Anybody looking to change out their bathroom vanities? Or their, okay. Um, size. Definitely come in with either um, the dimensions of it. It will greatly help you out. The other thing is um, have an idea. What kind of countertops, what kind of sink. They come in porcelain, cast iron, and even fiberglass. The price greatly reflects. Everybody always asks, what do I seal the bottom of a faucet with? They usually come with their own plastic seal. If they're installed properly, they will actually seal. If you want peace of mind, cheap insurance, put some silicone underneath here and then put it down. It works very, very well. Um, they normally don't leak. What you don't want to put underneath there is plumber's putty. All it does is it elevates your, your actual faucet up from the sink. Plumber's putty actually dries out over time. It cracks, it crumbles, um, it literally leaves a void there. That's where you get the leak coming down from the backside where the water lines protrude through. So that's why we tell people use silicone, it squishes down to absolutely nothing. And it's a lot easier. Has anybody done a pedestal sink or a kitchen sink and you just don't have the right tools to get up in there to actually tighten them on? Um, they used to not have these tools available to the actual homeowners or do-it-yourselfers. Um, I know what that is. One of the plumber's best friends. It's called a basin wrench. What it, what it does is there's jaws on here. It opens up. And I'm not dexed. It also turns 90 degrees out if it wasn't still on the package. But regardless, you can get it up in there and you can literally tighten it without having to have your head in there, your hands, 
It's about a $9 tool. It works wonderful. Um, sometimes you can get it without having to buy one of these, but if you run into that spot where it's tight, which is what plumbing is, it's always hard to get to. They also have the new and improved. I'll pass this around, um, but it, what it, it allows the water line to slip through. It has a couple different dies, a couple different jigs in here. When I first seen it, I said, you know what, it's just another gimmick. I'm not going to do it. Um, when I had apprentices and in a company that was running, I literally had each of my apprentices running with one of these. They can get up in there, they can tighten it. They don't have to get their wrenches in there and then question, gee, I hope I got it tight enough. This is actually worth its weight. It is a very nice tool. Uh, the pictures kind of show it. Do you want to pass it around? So in just mere talking, I got the faucet installed in here. Everybody likes to be human uh, and or he-man. They like to over tighten these. What I tell people is get it hand tight and then about a half a turn with a wrench. The wrench that they're passing around works wonderful for that. Um, the other trick plumbers do is we actually pull these out and we get it so we can look at what we're working on. A lot of people like to set it in the hole and then put your eyes underneath it and then drop all that wonderful stuff in your eyes and it's not fun. But work on it where you can see it, put it down on the floor, tighten it up. Works very, very easily. Getting back to the water lines. Water lines with the rubber grommets, and we have to be careful that we see them in there. Some of them have metal. Metal we have to get a little tighter, but they basically are hand tight. And then about a quarter turn to a half a turn past hand tight. That's pretty much done. If it leaks, you grab onto it and turn it a little bit more. But if you over tighten it, all you're doing is shortening the life of it. it in the model in plumbing though, is if it doesn't leak, don't touch it, leave it alone. <laughs> um, the drain assembly. There's a couple different ones out on the market. Most manufacturers, because of the economy, have gone to plastic with their drain assemblies. They do work well. If you over tighten them, they crack, it's plastic. Um, you can easily get the standard, uh, which is the brass. They literally go right in. Everybody likes to ask, how do you put them in? The top part, it's actually the drain. Uh, it's where the finish is. Um, it's one of the most easily destroyed parts, especially when you pour Drano on top of this. It eats it up immediately. It's a soft chrome. What I tell people, if you're gonna do drain cleaners, get it wet first, pour the liquid in, and then dump a lot of water over the top. Get it out of the trap, get it into the drain where it needs to be. Um, plumber's putty, silicone. This has been around since the standard of plumbing or the beginning of plumbing. Um, they used to put it underneath toilets, they used to make the wax seals out of this. Then they learned that in about seven years, it fails, it dries out. In plumbing or in sinks, when they're actually compressed and there's literally in a non-breathable uh, uh, environment, meaning where it's compressed between a sink and a drain, it works wonderfully well. If you have a culture marble top or a solid surface like granite, um, plumber's putty is actually made with some petroleum products. It's yellow in color. It actually stains things. So if it's porcelain, ca um, cast iron, or something with an enamel finish, it's okay to use, but if it's a soft product like marble, culture marble, um, any kind of question whether you think it's gonna stain, don't use it. The manufacturers actually put a bunch of stickers on things. Do not use plumber's putty here. A lot of times people don't read. I'm guilty of it too. I've done a few at <laughs> my grandparents' house. Uh, you go ahead and use your silicone again. Exactly, silicone, that's the alternative, yep, yep. The other thing is uh, how to put it on. You don't need a whole lot. You just need to cover that. Um, put it on so you can't see the base when you put it in. Lower the bottom nut. There's always a rubber seal on the bottom. But merely, it literally screws right on. Well, I don't have a low enough. Like I said, I do all of this work before I put it back into the actual top. It's a lot easier. Any questions so far on the sinks? If I, I can't. 
can't quite do it holding it like this. <laughs> Anybody have trouble with the linkage on the stoppers? Because American Standard has actually come up with a solution for that. Um, they have actually what's called an easy speed connect. Um, that is basically the industry standard of what a drain, drain is. On this type of faucet, they literally have, and everything's wrapping real nicely. They have what's called a cable. It really works well. People, when they first see it, they say, what, what are we getting ourselves into here? Um, you can actually do this with two left thumbs. It has a little quick screw together to actually put that on. It's literally you can just tighten it on. That's done. I can literally open and close that. If I took the cover off, you'd see it. There's even a protective thing. So you don't have that, how do I adjust it? How do I make it so it doesn't leak? How, you know, it's not quite right. But it's a very easy thing to do. You can literally take it off, it doesn't, you can be not even looking at it, just as long as that screws onto place. Can you get that as a replacement? It only comes right now in the actual faucet, um, with the faucet. So if you needed to replace one, you replace the faucet? Correct, um, if you needed to uh, work on it or something was going wrong with it, um, you can go right through the manufacturer. They have the 1-800 numbers on there. Um, they will literally, oh boy, I'm having trouble today. They will literally mail those out to you, usually free if you have trouble with them or you need a replacement. Um, okay, we kind of touched base on plumbing. Um, any questions on the plumbing part of it? What's that? It will actually outlive steel. Steel will actually slowly decompose. The plastic doesn't decompose. Are you referring to like the, the white plastic like this? It actually is smoother on the inside. Um, all metal pipes actually are very um, non-smooth. If you looked at them, compared them underneath a microscope, or if you really compared them, these are a lot smoother. They don't build up. The, the grease, the sludge, um, they don't collect things as easily. So they, they actually do work a little bit better. Uh, usually plastic has certain age and then it deteriorates. Sure. I haven't heard of any of these actually failing unless they are actually um, soaking them in like a Drano or doing something they're not supposed to with them. Um, the PVC pipes have been around since like about the 70s <coughs> um, and that's literally PVC. It literally does really a really well job for the plumbing industry. Where, yes, where you can probably see them fail is because you've got your output from your garbage disposal coming into that and the, the uh, abrasion of say the chicken bones and as they get ground up by the, the uh, garbage disposal. Correct. Um, what's really they act, they'll actually wear out the pipe from the inside. They can sure. You, end, you can end up with, with virtually only the plating on the outside of the pipe holding it together. Sure. Sure. Over and I've, I've seen yep. that like, have happen. Yep. Like I said, it depends on how or who or what is using them and what's actually being put in through them. Yeah. Um, they they kind of do loosen up. They kind of do get really dirty. A lot of people will replace them when they're starting to look kind of dirty and grimy and it's not so much that they're wearing out, it's literally that they've kind of um, gotten dirty and they're kind of wore out. The plastic nuts, they come on these. What plastic doesn't like is vibrations um, or expansion and contractions. So they can actually wear out from tension or pressure. If things aren't lining up, things have a way of uh, letting gravity take over when they're loose. Therefore, they can do that. But you're right, they can theoretically wear out and there are situations where they have which is true about everything in plumbing. I mean, plumbing doesn't last. You don't like when you bring chicken bones in the bathroom? 
Not necessarily. I don't recommend that. Nope. Nope. I don't recommend that. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Any other questions on plumbing? We can easily come back to it. Toilets. I heard that kettle boiling water was a little bit of dawn. Soap. For the cleaning of pipes? Yeah, um, there's a bunch of uh, things that people have come up with home remedies, and uh, some people say vinegar, some people say um, this iron out. Um, there's a bunch of things. There's also enzymes, which is a naturally occurring um, bacteria. I don't even know what it is, but regardless, it's an enzyme. Um, they literally like to eat the sludge and the grease and all the wonderful things that build up inside your pipes, especially coming out of your kitchen. Periodically, that is a wonderful product to put down there. Um, I'm a plumber by trade. I, I snake all my drains. Um, I, I, I'm, yeah, exactly. Um, if it works for you, keep going. Yep. Toilets. When you are in your remodel project, you have your toilet off. You have either going to keep your floor or you're going to redo your floor. The most vital part to changing out your toilet is the flange. A lot of times uh, we have these older houses where they have cast iron flanges. And over the years, um, whether something got over tightened, something breaks. We have replacements, um, just what every hardware store has them. They fit inside their flanges. Um, what the critical thing is, you have to make sure it's secured. That is what the toilet actually bolts to. Um, when you pull it off, there will be two little slots. Um, that's where these toilet bolts go into. There's plastic, there's brass. They both work. It's whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, what I tell people is if you use the brass, make sure you go down to and the nuts and hardware, um, get yourself an extra nut and an extra washer. Secure them. Um, has anybody replaced the toilet and they use the brass closet bolts like this and they go to set the toilet and all of a sudden these bolts are kind of flopping all over the place. For about 17 cents you can get yourself an extra nut, an extra washer, bolt it to the flange so it doesn't move. It makes life a whole lot simpler. Very, very wonderful trick. They like to send out these plastic keepers, they call them. Not many of us plumbers use them. Um, they literally, the minute you even touch it, it's not keeping it. it. It will hold it for about three seconds, and that's about all you get out of it. Um, anybody know what this is? Now there's, manufacturers have actually gone as far as to say that they have created an all-in-one box. An all-in-one box includes one wax ring, one seat, a toilet tank, and the bowl. Um, when you're going to choose your all-in-one bo uh, box, depending on your manufacturer, there's a couple things you want to know. The flush rating. Um, out of competition, all manufacturers have actually sent all their products to an independent study. They have what's called the flush rating. Uh, one being the worst, a 10 being the best. We've tried selling the four, five, six, seven, and eights. They don't sell when they have a 10 right next to it for the same price. Why would you want a toilet that doesn't flush very well? They, um, uh, whether you Menard, Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, they're about $100 for the um, entry level. If you want um, customer service, go for the ones that are a little bit more name brand, the Kohlers, the American Standards, the Elgers, um, but definitely look for that flush rating. 10 being the best, one being the worst. Um, every competitor in the big box stores, we all have them. When we're going to put these on, has anybody read the instructions on a new toilet? Every manufacturer says to put this on the bottom of the toilet. They say literally, on the instructions, they literally say, slap it on, you're done. The problem with that is, yeah, we sealed to the top, but now you have no idea where you're sealing to on the floor. When you're setting this down, usually you're, you're picking it up and you're kind of holding it. And you're kind of going, okay, well, there's the bolts. And we set it down. Well, we don't know if it actually sealed to the flange or not. Um, every plumber that I've ever met, we put these on the floor and we make sure that there's a critical measurement here. From the finished floor, whether it's tile, linoleum, wood, carpet, whatever you got, um, it needs to be at least one inch above that floor. Very critical. Underneath every toilet is 
a five eighths recession to about a half an inch. So if you have one inch sticking above that floor, you're gonna have a half an inch of wax squish. You're gonna know it seals. You're also gonna notice this is about a three inch opening here. These are four inch. You have a huge window of opportunity to hit it. So if you put this on there and, you, and your flange is four inch, um, and you put that on there and you literally squish it down, you seal it to the flange, you know it's gonna be sealed underneath. You can actually check for the seal up on top because this will actually sit off the floor about a half an inch. You literally have to manually squish the wax. People ask me all the time, what do I do if I don't have that inch? You have a couple options. We call it stacking. You can literally put two of them together and literally seam them. It kind of melts in your uh, hands just from the temperature of your fingers. Um, the other trick is they have what's called flange extensions. We can raise them up. Um, but that's something that you need to determine once you have that old toilet off and we're looking at it. The other thing that people like to do is they get the toilet set, they got the tank on, they got the seat on, it's working. They like to leave these up and long. Um, there's, when people clean, the rags catch them, you're pulling them, you're wiggling them. Um, by putting the caps on, taking a hacksaw, cutting them down so they're actually low enough to get the cap on, it just has a nicer finish. Um, I'm guilty of it too. I've literally probably done about 15 in my life where they call me back a year later. I was always wondering, why didn't you ever do that? I forgot. <laughs> it's just, it's human nature, you forget. Um, the other thing is that people like to do homework um, on toilets. There are gonna be a lot of misleading uh, things out there. Um, they say that they have a four inch flapper. They have a three inch flapper. There's a commercial out there that says they can flush a golf, uh, whole bucket of golf balls. If it has a flush rating of 10, I don't care who the manufacturer is, it's gonna, they all do it. Just the one has came up clever enough for that advertising. Um, between a three inch and a four inch flapper, the only difference is the outside ring of the flapper. They're made out of rubber. Um, the actual hole, the throat, between the tank and the bowl, that isn't four inch. That's not even three, that's more of about a two and a half. They all have a two and a half to two and a quarter inch trapway. People like to think they have a four inch trapway. And the trapway on a toilet, this is the trap. In the bowl there's water here, but it comes across to here. That's your trap. When the water flushes, obviously it goes up and over and then what's called siphoning. There's a couple new toilets on the market. Standard height, and then comfort height, and then ADA uh, handicap height. ADA is 18 inches off the floor, and that's for the handicap. Uh, there is comfort height, which is 16 and a half. Mind you, there's a window of opportunity. There's about a half an inch of discrepancy um, when they say it's a 16 and a half. This one was uh, told it was a 16 and a half. If I measure it, it's probably 16 and a quarter. It's just like your water heater. They say it's 40, it's actually 39. It's close enough. The standard is actually 14 and a half to 15. People have actually gotten taller over the years. Um, if you measure each one of these chairs, they are gonna be 16 inches. That's just the standard. It's easier on a person to have a taller toilet. It's your, it's your choice, there's no right and wrong. There's also three different types of toilets out on the market. A 10 inch rough-in, a 12 inch rough-in, and a 14. 99% of all toilets in every store have what's called a 12 inch rough-in. And how we achieve that, everybody see the two holes where the bolts pass through? How we achieve that is when the toilet, your old toilet's sitting there, get out the tape measure, measure to the wall behind there. Mind you, when they took that measurement for the 10, 12, or 14, they're talking to the rough stud. They're not the tile, not the sheetrock, not the plaster. Well, you have to determine what type of walls you have, take into consideration how thick that is. Plaster is usually three quarters of an inch to an inch. Uh, sheetrock is usually a half an inch. Trim is usually about a quarter of an inch. So, I tell people, take, a, take an inch as a rough guideline, add it to this measurement. So if you go right up to that back wall and measure right to that stud, if they have 11 inches, that's a 12 inch rough end. If you, get, if you have that one house out there that is 13 inches, you put a 12 inch rough in there, you're gonna have about that much room behind your toilet tank. 
The problem with that is you get that one person who is discombobulated, uh, loses their balance, and they put all their weight against that tank. Guess what? It just broke it here. You got a nice flood happening. So you either need to brace it, a 14 inch roughened toilet. If you put a 12 inch there, it will work. You just have a gap there. You need to anticipate it so that you don't have that flood. The other thing in plumbing, what I tell people is nothing leaks after I'm there and I just installed it. It leaks usually happen 12 hours to 14 hours to 24 hours after I leave. I don't know what it is, it's just the curse of plumbing. The next day, after you do any type of plumbing, go and look. Gravity takes over, it always winds up on the floor, or the base of the cabinet, um, definitely look. You can look, your eyes can lie to you. Um, how we check for leaks in the plumbing world is we use paper towel. We run that across the floor, it doesn't lie. You can see water on the paper towel very, very easily. Um, what about elongated bowls versus round bowls? There's about an inch and a half difference there. Um, there's a lot of houses in the area, um, in the entire state, that have small bathrooms. A lot of people like to, it's very popular to put in this elongated toilet into this very small bathroom. It's taller, it's longer. The problem is it makes this bathroom feel even smaller. Um, you might want to consider staying with the, the standard round. You can go taller on a, on a round and then you don't have that quite of a feel. Um, it's merely um, your choice. It's there for comfort. Um, well, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And how about tank of soils? They're definitely available over in Europe. Um, they're slowly coming here um, into the United States. There's a uh, they're not quite here yet. They haven't worked all the bugs out. I don't know if it's in politics or why it's not here yet. Um, the other thing is um, water saving toilets. Um, most toilets since 1991 are 1.6. Previous to 91, they were literally three to 3.2 gallons. So there's literally, they cut the water right in half. When they first came out, you know what? They're junk. I wouldn't, I, if you had a 91, I'd say get rid of it, let's buy a new one. They will literally flush 10 times better. Um, the newest advertisement is they're flushing with 1.2 gallons. They've actually dropped it down. And what that is, is actually advertisement. They're trying to get you to say, hey, I'm water, water conscious. I'm <coughs> saving water by dropping it down four tenths of a gallon. What they did is they just lowered the water level in the tank. 90% um, of people will actually say it doesn't flush as well. Let's raise up the water level about that half an inch and let's get it to flush where it's supposed to. 1.6 is by far the best flushing performance that you will find. What about the dual flush toilets? They do work. They're very simple to install. Oh, excuse me. Um, they're very. What? Dual flush toilets. Okay. Dual flush toilets. Um, they are very popular in the world. Um, we in Minnesota are very slow to adapt to it. Um, they are available. We do have adapter kits. Um, it's basically a new flapper. It comes uh, with a cable and it goes right out to the actual trip lever or the uh, flush lever. Two buttons, big button, little button, little button, little flush, big button, big flush. Where people go wrong is they forget and also next thing you know, now they're pushing all the buttons and now they just flush their toilet basically twice <laughs> to three times. So are they really saving water? Not quite yet. I mean, until they figure it out, yes. Um, but, what's that? Installation is the same. They're about as easy to change out as a flapper. Um, flappers are literally two ears or a ring that go on. Um, there's a bunch of different styles out on the market. Has anybody had a toilet that has that, that continuous running or that toilet that turns on and off, on and off? It's usually because of the flapper. The, in all city water, there's a wonderful chemical called chlorine. It keeps the water safe to drink. It also sanitizes things. Rubber doesn't like chlorine. It literally wrinkles it, it turns all kind of funny colors and it even breaks it down. Um, if you're ever going to change out your toilet, look for a product called chlorine resistant. It's about 40 cents more. It's not much more, but you'll have about a five to 10 year life better um, expectancy out of it. Now there's also newer toilets out on the market that are called flapperless. And this is the reason I brought this toilet. This toilet's about $90 at Home Depot. It has a tray inside of it. It actually works really well. Um, I was hired to actually put this toilet into a guy's house that lived on Minnetonka, um, and I kind of said, you're putting $80, $90 toilets in this multi-million dollar place, and I'm like, what are you doing? And 
I didn't tell them that because that's kind of rude. Um, but when I actually turned the water onto this toilet and I actually use it and I flushed it, it actually, I was very impressed. Um, I would put this in my own personal place. Um, what the benefits to this toilet is, it's not rubber, it's chlorine resistant PVC. Um, if you have that house that doesn't have air conditioning, what happens to the toilet tank? It sweats, condensation. The water's in the tray. If the tray sweats, where does the water go? Into the toilet where it's supposed to. Very, very brilliant toilet. It's probably by far the most engineered toilet we have at Home Depot. What is it called? Uh, it's actually called the Glacier Bay Niagara, a waterfall. Some people are a little bit um, skeptical about putting in a new toilet. We've had it for about three years. We have all the parts to replace it literally right on our shelves. Um, we have not had any trouble with this toilet yet. It is by far a very wonderful toilet. Yes, ma'am. What's the flush rating on that one? A 10. It is a 10. Yeah. And what's yeah. the advantage of that plastic tray? It is non-corrosive. It doesn't break down um, like the rubber flappers will. The rubber flapper is by far the weakest part within a toilet. It's the first part to fail. Um, the next are the seals inside. Um, the other nice thing about this one is it is a 10, 11, and a 12, and a 13 inch roughen. There's little slots here that allow the tank to move back and forth. They have a great big seal on the bottom so that if you can't quite remember or you forget to measure your toilet and you're not quite certain, that's brilliant. It's the only toilet that actually has that. Um, on the bowl, they have a corresponding, the corresponding slots. Every other toilet has a hole. This has channels. Very brilliant toilet. It's a $90. It's a wonderful toilet. So, something to consider. Some people don't like it because they don't recognize the name, or some people are just skeptical. They like the Kohler name, they like the American Standard, or the Algiers, or whatever else is on the market, something they recognize. It's not a bad toilet. It actually, I would, I would literally put as many bath or toilets that I had in my house. I would put all, one of these toilets in. The very good toilets. Yes. Does that come in the comfort height? It is. Yep. Comfort height, but it only comes in elongated. That's the downfall. If we, as soon as we get the round, I'll say, you know what? It's the bulletproof toilet. You know, you got every situation covered. Well, Any other? Wax rings. Yep. Is that uh, so? Will that? Can I assume that'll last a life as long as the toilet's there, or is there some point when it's going to dry out and all of a sudden I get sewage dumped in between my porch? Anybody know why wax rings leak? Rocking. The rocking. A loose toilet. The loose bolts. It doesn't um, dry out. It doesn't even break down. It wax, it's a literally it originated as a beeswax. That's what the original wax ring was. They've actually manufactured it now. It's actually a synthetic beeswax now. Um, it's sticky. It's going to get your hands a little sticky. Have a paper towel, wipe them off. We as plumbers, we do this. Um, it is what it is. It does come off in the, in the wash. Um, it is a wonderful product though. Um, they used to use plumber's putty and that's where it dried out and then they'd always have that really bathroom that had that wonderful odor. Um, and that's usually the cause of it. That's why they made or said it has to be beeswax or something comparable. Yes? And those flush ones, are there any that are much noisier than others? They've all kind of came to the same sound. Um, I can't say this toilet will be a little bit uh, quieter than this toilet. Um, they all kind of sound about the same now. What you will notice is the amount of water that is dumped between that three inch flapper or that four inch flapper, this is basically the equivalent of a three inch flapper. And that's what gives it that 10 or that flush rating of a 10. Um, by dumping, they figured out by having a large amount of water, quickly the siphon, which pulls the trap, is greatly increased. The other thing that makes uh, toilets flush better is gravity. Having that taller toilet, that comfort height, that ADA um, handicap toilet, the taller the toilet, the more gravity, the more siphon you get. Has anybody had that um, power assisted toilet? The one that sounds like a jet taken off when you flush it. <laughs> They don't do that anymore. These flush just as equally well. Um, they, those were a 10. The problem with it, parts were expensive, hard to maintain because there's no screws that you, can, you don't know what to adjust. Even I, I've, I probably installed maybe 15 in my life. I still have to pull out um, the internet and I have to literally look it up to see how do you adjust these things again. Um, so 
they pretty much have gone off the market. You, know, you can't even find those anymore. Um, they had a big reservoir inside. These flush equally as well. We as humans can't tell the difference. A computer probably can. They could probably say, well, it flushed 30 milligrams uh, more than the other toilet. Um, so by far, the flush rating of a 10 is a very critical, wonderful knowledge to know. Anything else on toilets? Tiling. We live in an age where all kinds of new products are coming out. What do you normally put underneath tile? The adhesive to mount it to the wall, to a shower. Um, if we get into that remodel project, we've pulled off all the tile, and now we're kind of saying, well, we gotta put this adhesive on, we gotta get this five gallon bucket. Um, $20, it literally is a 10 square foot spot. You can literally peel the plastic off, push this on the wall, you're ready to put your tile on. It literally is a t huge time saver for remodelers. Almost very popular that we can't even keep it on our shelf. That's how popular this is. And it lasts. It does. Um, the, the old one wasn't rated for showers. This one is. It literally is worth um, its weight in gold. I'm a skeptical. I don't believe everything I read, and I have to try it. Um, so I had a buddy of mine who is a tiler, and he swears up and down by it. I wanted to see him put it on the wall. I wanted to see him put it in that tub or that shower area. He put it on, he was literally had water on literally 12 hours later once that grout was dry. It was amazing. Um, and it's been about three years since it's been out. And it's still working, he hasn't had any trouble. Yes, ma'am? That's only for tile on the walls? No. Behind your kitchen, um, on the cabinets for backsplashes, um, on the floor, absolutely. It's very, very sticky. Um, you definitely want to wear old clothes when you're wearing it. Um, if you touch it, you will stick to your hand pretty well. Um, you literally peel the plastic off, you adhere it right to the wall. Wonderful, 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 quick product. Um, in that box. About 10 square, uh, 10 square feet. Is this a cement board? It is not replaced cement board. This goes on the cement board. It's literally about an eighth of an inch thick to three sixteenths. Um, it, they do require a soft sponge, grout sponge. Um, usually the, the tool you use to push the grout into the cracks you have to literally push the tile into the stickiness to help make it smooth in order to get a better surface area where it's biting. Does it have any problem with large tiles? If you're going, you know, 18 inch tiles or something on the wall, they well, can, it can hold that weight? It can hold the weight. Mind you, you still need the little squares, the little crosses to help hold the weight, um, and you always work from the bottom up. You don't do the opposite, and gravity will help you there. Um, very wonderful product. It's about $19. Um, every Yes. Does that dry then? It does actually cure. It will actually become rock hard. Um, just, it's, um, what is that, hot glue? It has the same um, tension or the same thickness or hardness of hard glue or the hot glue. So once you take it out of there, I, I don't know if it's sealed or whatever, but once you take it out of there, you have a working time where you have to get yeah. the tile on the wall? You have, you have a literally two, three, five hours. Um, you don't have to worry that, oh geez, I waited. Um, definitely read the instructions. It will tell you, um, don't put it on and come back three days later and expect it to be not cured. Um, it has something to do with the oxygen in the air. There's a chemical reaction there. Um, so it does actually, the longer you let it sit, the harder it gets. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Where most people like to put it is on the backsplashes in their kitchens. And that's originally where they wanted this. Um, but remodelers have experimented. They put it in their bathroom. Um, they learned they needed to correct something a few years ago to make it more for the waterproofing of the bathroom for, for the showers. But yeah, it works wonderful on floors. What are the things that come with Excel? Yeah. So, well, I'm sorry? It is, there's two sheets, um, and it's kind of um, sealed together. You need to pull the plastic off. So when you're pushing on it, you'll be pushing on a um, plastic that you'll be able to pull off. You're not going to have your hand on it. It, it literally will be um, no plastic on here. It's wrapped in cellophane. The dark side where it's white, um, obviously we're going to pull that off. We didn't want to be able to see what you're actually putting up. 
Um, you can take a scissors, you can cut it around, you can cut, do whatever you got to do to make it fit your application. When you peel this layer off and we stick it up on the wall, you can actually push with your hand and that will, that will literally get it to stick there. Would you like to pass that around? That's just to adhere the tile to the wall or the floor. Um, a lot of people have the green dur rock. Um, they experimented with that. It's actually sheetrock that has a water vapor barrier on it. It, it didn't last very long out of the market. Um, if it gets wet, it becomes saturated, and you can push your hand right through it just like sheetrock. Um, there is a couple of different products called Cement Board, Hardy Backer, a um, couple of different products, and there's pros and cons of both, but they both work wonderfully well. Um, this product works really well on both of those. You can actually remove your old tile. If you have good dirt rock behind there, or a good hardy back, or a good surface behind there, you need to check it to make sure that it's rigid. It hasn't sustained any water damage. If you don't have the water damage, you're ready to put this on, you can have your tile done that same day. Yes, sir? What if when you remove the old tile, now your sheet rock is going to be damaged, right? It, it could be from the old glue, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't make a difference in you should actually get uh, a new surface on there, um, and they have leveling compounds. They have actually um, plaster that you can put on. If you go to do these repairs where you're filling in the voids or the holes, um, it is recommended to actually put what's called a water vapor barrier behind it, liquid latex. Most tile contractors, when they go to do the remodel and they pulled off the old tile and there's holes in the wall or there's sheetrock, uh, nail hole, uh, screw pops, um, to old glue, you pull it off, it's got a damaged rock. You can actually take regular sheetrock compound and put it up, get it nice and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect, it should be close though. Um, this is liquid latex, you could put it on with a brush. You can put it on with a brush, you would literally make a, literally a balloon where this water wet area will be. Um, you can put it on your ceiling, you can put it on your flo um, the floor to all the way to the shower walls. Um, you're gonna put it on in about three or four different coats. It dries in about five minutes, uh, very easily put on. But it does make a very nice thick membrane. Very, very uh, important to have a waterproof um, surround, especially when you're using the sheetrock compound to fill in the holes. But it's a wonderful product. Unfortunately, this is about 35 bucks. So, you, so on your bathroom walls, especially in the shower area, you put a sewer, like, like a hardy backer yep. and then this? Correct, correct. So you're from, from and that's and then that's put the hardy backer on the stud and then Correct. It literally covers up all the nails, all the screws. So um, how thick do you get off the stud? It winds up being about an eighth inch thick after about three coats. Um, so it's a real nice thick membrane. Um, it adheres wonderfully well. Tight space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To figure out what, yeah. what exactly is going to go in there. Yep. The nice thing about this, it also fills in cracks. A lot of times with hardy backer cement board, you always wind up with that nice wide open space there, you can actually fill in the crack a little bit with it. Um, it'll take a couple extra coats, but it will actually fill in holes. Now does that go on all the walls or just walls entirely? That's your discretion. Um, if it's a wet area, I tell people, do the entire room, do the entire wall, that whole tub surround area. Um, a lot of people don't really put it on the floor. Um, you're more than welcome to. It is expensive. It is about $35 for the half gallon. What's that? Correct. Steel. Correct. Um, that is a latex. Um, it is. There is actually different types of tile adhesive. Uh, the latex is not meant for in the wet environments. Yeah. Um, it, I. People have their opinions on what, what they like better. Um, I like the adhesive without the grout in it. Um, I put that on first and then the tile, but now that this mat has come out, I'm gonna be doing that. Can I use this instead of grout? Nope, that actually goes on the rough wall before the tile. Once that, first. correct, it literally makes a big balloon. And you put the mat on top of that. Correct. And that's your adhesive. Yes, exactly. And then it can grow in after, after the tiles. Grow after yep. Yep. You get your tiles. Yep. The beauty of the mat is you don't have to wait for that to dry or cure. 
after you have that on, after you push it into place, you can literally grow out literally 20 minutes later. What's the coverage for the How much would that down? It actually depends on how you put it on. Um, they don't really have a say that this will do um, uh, 10 square foot area. Um, I had a larger shower. Um, I thought one would do. I actually ended up going back and getting an extra, uh, another gallon of it or another tub of it. So that's a smaller shower kind of? Yeah, that will do basically a normal 36, 48 inch shower, no problem. Yep. No, I'm sorry, to go back. this would go on the wall that you're not going to tile as well? If you're not going to tile it, you don't need it. Okay. It's in that wet area. Okay, so just on the wet area. Yep. Right. yep. So now we've got our tile installed, we got it grouted, it's cured, it's dry. What is the next step? Does anybody know? Correct. Grout sealer. sealer. At least once a year, if not twice a year. That's one step. I preach it. I tell people you got to do it. I have tile shower at home. I think I've done it once in three years. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, um, but it's also, it's very vital. Grout is porous. It's cement. Cement absorbs water. It can actually get in behind and it can drain down. That is why the importance of the red guard. If it does get through the grout and there's red guard back there, it slides down the red guard and out the bottom of the tile. Um, whenever you have a tub, or you have a base that your shower is going to be in, you should always leave what's called a weep hole for drainage. Because if water gets behind there and it can't drain, guess what? It's going to cause damage. It just had, that's the nature of the beast. Um, they literally either use like a toothpick or they leave just a little small opening in something that you can't visually see. But a weep holes are very important. Um, but by sealing it, it's cheap insurance. Literally, once a year, um, some manufacturers say twice a year. It's, if you remember to do it, um, more power to you. Like I said, I'm, I preach it, I tell people you gotta do it, and then I forget. Um, but very, very, very vital. The other thing about this, um, from the tiling contractors that I know personally to the ones that come into my store, I always ask, if you like it, tell me why, and what, what don't you like about the other products? They basically have said, Dollars will greatly reflect what chemicals are in these and how long they last. There's a, this is I think like a $10 bottle. There's ones that are like a dollar, $2, $3. On sealers, it is, it does actually, the more, this, this little bottle is what most contractors actually use. It's made by Miracle. They swear up and down by it. Um, if they're a contractor, they use it every day. The last thing they want is a service call. They're not happy. They're not getting paid. They're doing work for free. They're actually fixing something because they use an inferior product. So when they say that this is what they swear up and down by, I have a tendency to believe them. Um, any questions so far? Yes. Just, uh, just to clarify, you just seal the grout. You don't have to seal the tile. It depends on the tile that you're using. There are granite, there are slates, there are natural stone products, those have to be sealed also. And they also should be cleaned before you seal them. If you don't clean them, you're actually sealing the grease, the soap, the lime, the dirt, whatever, into that sealer, it's not going to come out. Um, so definitely buy a cleaner, clean it. Some of the best sponges out on the market actually have a little scrub pad, and then the, always get a new, a new sponge. Um, a lot of people like to save a dollar or two and they literally, oh, I'll use my old one and then it's crumbling and they're wiping the, these crumbs into their sealer or their grout. It's always good advice, literally, to get a new sponge, a clean sponge especially. Any questions so far? Yes, sir. We have sheetrock that has handling glued on. Okay. Is there anything that can be done besides tearing the sheetrock out? Because I know when we take the paneling off, you know what the sheetrock's going to be. And when, what is the room going to be used? It, well, it's a bath. Okay. Unfortunately, um, a lot of times they use construction adhesive to yes. adhere that. Your sheetrock is going to be pretty ugly. Um, you might just have save a few hours instead of trying to save it. Just pull it down, but you won't know until you're actually doing it. Um, Normally what they see when they see sheetrock and paneling, nope, let's get that off. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's not what people want to hear though. Um, but you will save some time with the attitude going in there that, hey, it's coming down, I don't have to be clean and neat about it. 
Yes, ma'am. Do you see plastic tiles in the bathroom? Not so much on the plastic. Plastic is water. Um, um, just the grout. Yep, water. Uh, the plastic does actually repel water uh, very well. There's actually um, two ways of doing it. One is the manual way. Um, it literally is a screwdriver, but it has a tungsten carbide, very gritty looking um, tool. I didn't bring one, but it looks like sandpaper glued on a little knife. And you can literally manually scratch it out. Um, you can actually do a, what's called a Dremel with a grout removal, and they have a guide. And you can literally just walk it along, it spins it, it spins it out. The problem with that is it's very dusty. It's throwing dust out in the air, it's throwing the little sand uh, particles out. Um, it's however you can get it out, there's no right and wrong. What you want to be careful of is not to damage the tile. So sometimes with Dremel, if you're not careful, you can literally damage it. This will actually go onto the plastics. It literally just pushes into place. Um, the pipes literally go in one full inch. Remodelers love them because there's no tools. It takes human error right out of the equation. You literally push it in, you're done. So you're not soldering, you're not gluing. Um, the problem is there's a lot of engineering, a lot of manufacturing that goes into it. So they're about four to five dollars a fitting. Some of the rarer ones are a little bit more money, um, but they do work really well out in the remodeling world. Teflon tape, pipe joint compound. Anybody know the difference where you're supposed to use it? Correct. Teflon tape goes on what you may want to take off somewhere? Um, not so much. Um, how it was taught to me is Teflon tape is a deep thread sealer, whether it's half inch, whether it's inch and a half, two inch, three inch. Um, all these threads are very deep. What we do is we hold it in one hand, we literally wrap around four or five times, if not eight times. You don't have to be very exact. A lot of people like to put just one layer on and then they come back and say, well, it didn't, it didn't seal anything. And I'm like, well, how much Teflon did you put on? How it was taught to me is I put on four to five times with Teflon tape. We call this the topping technique. Um, I like to explain this only because I hold it in my left hand, hold it in my thumb, and I top it, if I can hold it. But I go four or five times around, it does a nice, it's a deep thread sealant. You really only need it on the very first uh, three eighths of an inch to a half an inch because the fittings only go on three eighths of an inch to a half an inch. Um, we put this over the top. Anybody know why? It's pipe joint compound. It's actually basically, originally it was liquid Teflon. Now it's actually uh, manufactured. It's actually a synthetic product that's similar to it. It's a little cheaper to manufacture. It works the same though. It takes friction out of the equation. All plumbing pipes are actually tapered. So the tighter you screw things together, the more luck you're gonna have with actually making a seal. So I can teach my um, apprentices, they right off the street, they have never even seen the channel locks before. I can show them this trick. I can actually walk away and actually feel confident that they're gonna get it tight enough. You put this liquid on, it takes friction out of the equation, it just walks right together. Um, most people like to think Teflon is the cure-all. Um, they wrap anything and everything, it's just like silicone. Um, they like to call plumber's goop the cure-all to the, any plumbing leak. Um, it is literally meant for a deep thread sealant. Um, it helps bulk up the actual joint that you're trying to screw together. It does work well. Um, we sometimes even use this in spots where we're not supposed to. Um, but this is the real trick. Tape. I put that right over the top. It goes on like toothpaste. It's actually rather thick. I literally take my finger and put it over the top. Yep, yep. And do the old plumber trick and wipe it on my pants and I'm done. Um, it is water soluble. Um, you do need to be careful when you're choosing these. There's a lot out in the market. Uh, they're oil based, they're water based. This is the only one that's water based. It comes in a red and white can uh, tube or a yellow. The yellow is only for gas. They do that only for color coding, um, coordinating. That's your, that's your PTFE, right? Well, PTFE is actually a manufacturer's model name, and that is actually an oil-based product. If you put the that yellow, oil... The yellow tape, well, yeah. That is a big misconception. Um, there's not one gas manufacturer or even supplier that actually recommends you use the tape. Um, you need to use the liquid to take friction out of the equation. All gas is literally a compression or a screw together type connection. They want to make sure that you have sealed 
extremely, extremely tight or even to the right torque. So they, they recommend that you use the liquid on it. Um, they do sell it, we sell a lot of it, but I also cringe every time I sell it. It is what it is. Um, so if you have good luck doing it, more power to you. Um, but they recommend the liquid, that's what gas companies, if you have that service plus and they come out and they're checking for a gas leak and they see the yellow tape, they're gonna say that's a problem. They're not even gonna investigate any further. If they see the, the liquid lubricant on there, they will literally do a full thorough investigation. Um, it is vital. That's what their guidelines are. That's what they have to do. Any other questions? Any specific questions to their project? Yes. Uh, we drop that. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Five seems a little bit short. Five and a half is probably uh, bad. Okay. I don't know if I want to go to a six or seven and a half feet. Or I want to come around. Plumbing is very um, generalized. Um, it's they're, the cheapest way of going is the five foot tub. Yeah. Um, there's also a six foot tub. There's also the five and a half. The five and a half is very rare. Um, you are going to want to do your homework, investigate find out which is in your budget. Um, and that's why when I first got here, I said, have a game plan, do your homework, figure out what tub you want to use. Uh, the industry is actually walking away from cast iron. Um, it's because they're not easy to actually maneuver around. They're heavy. It takes two, three, four guys to actually get these things into the house. Um, they have some steel tubs that actually look, they feel, um, they work just the same as a cast iron. Um, they're also not as popular as the fiberglass or acrylic. There's two reasons for that. One is the steel tubs are natural conductors of BTUs. They rob the heat out of the bathtub. Um, you can actually put insulation around the tub and actually help fight that conductivity. Um, or you can go with the fiberglass or the acrylic tub. Contractors like the fiberglass or acrylic, they're light, they're easy. If they damage it, they can be fixed. They, can, they have surface specialty companies that can come in, uh, repair it. You'll never even know that there was a crack there. Um, that's the industry standard, though. But it's flimsy. flimsy? Yeah. Correct, um, but there's ways around that. Um, most contractors in their own personal place, um, when they're setting a tub or a bathtub, they'll literally buy the cheapest bag of cement, uh, sand mix, They'll mix it in underneath the tub. They'll literally set the tub on top of it. When it cures, it's a nice, solid, huge base that it takes away that flimsiness. So that's a, a wonderful step to anticipate if you're thinking about putting in a new tub. And don't you need a little bit of uh, distance between the wall and the plumbing rooms? Or is that just... Usually the plumbing's in the actual stud cavity. But you, if you're anticipating putting tile in, um, you need to have these measurements and these increments actually figured out. Um, a lot of times on these shower faucets or the, the bathroom sink, um, they, they do offer a window of opportunity about an inch of forgiveness. It does happen, I've done it, um, where I've set this faucet too far in and I've had to go in and actually move it forward, it's a pain in the royal butt. Um, but it, everything can be changed. Yes, sir? Are there any uh, tips or anything as far as setting the, putting in a new shower, as far as uh, things to maybe focus on or really make sure you do? Uh, the drain assemblies, the trap um, where the pipe comes up out of the floor, uh, you want to measure twice, cut once. Um, if those are not perfect, you have nothing but trouble for the rest of the time that shower's there. Um, it is very vital that they come up right where that center mark is. They usually have in every base or every shower that you're buying, um, and it's called the template or a measuring um, type schematic. Sometimes they even have big sheets like this that you can actually lay out on the floor and then literally pinpoint where that center mark is. Um, this was actually for the sink here, um, but templates can actually be your best friend. They literally put them right on the floor, but that's very vital. Get that where it needs to be. Any other questions? Yes, sir. The thing about putting in the heated floor mat, Yep. Are there any kind of tiles I want to avoid from the floor? Not so much on the tile. Um, as long as it's a solid tile, uh, the plastic you want to avoid. Where you want to be careful about with that electric mat is 
around your toilet. This melts. You put heat around that, it's gone. Bear, keep, keep it away. With the heated floors, you want to keep in mind what the thought process is when you're putting those in, whether it's electric or hot water, is where are your feet going to be? You don't, you stand in the corner, your feet don't actually go by the wall behind the toilet. It doesn't need to be there. In the hallway where you walk, where you get out of the shower, where you're sitting on the toilet, where your feet are, that's where you want it. But definitely at least a foot away from this. They learned that one the hard way. <laughs> yes, sir. Can you put an electric mat in the shower? Not recommended. <laughs> you can. You definitely need to anticipate it's a wet environment, you have electricity. Um, or hot water pipes would be a little bit better choice. Sometimes that's not feasible though, but yeah, it's not recommended though. So take in mind, um, you can red guard it, you can do, put it in there. I have seen it done before. Uh, most electricians go, oh boy, I hope you know what you're getting into. Um, it's a matter of your choice. Any other questions? On the tub since we're on, yep. you know, I, I'm gonna hate giving up my cast iron tub because I'm larger than the average person. Sure. And every other fiberglass that I've stepped in, you know, when you lean up against the fiberglass, fiberglass mm -hmm. is there any better surrounds? Is like fiberglass or acrylic better? Or because I, I hate tiles. I don't care what, it will fail in the shower eventually. And so I will, I'm going away from the tile, but I hate the surround. So I, there is, um, there's a manufacturer called Musty. Um, it's one of those names on a plumbing products that I say, why did they name yourself Musty? Um, it is actually a um, kind of a Durastone, it's a manufactured product, um, but it's about a quarter inch thick. It's very, very durable. It doesn't flex like all the other surrounds. Um, it is a whole lot more money. It's literally about four or five times the price, um, but it is very rigid. The other trick to it is spray foam behind um, have a solid surface there, whether it's sheetrock, um, whether it's plywood, um, something, but you can actually foam it or you can actually um, put bracing in behind it. Um, spray foam works, you just don't want to use the whole can in a small area because it expands. Um, it will bulge, uh, bulge it out. Um, the solid surfaces, um, there are some tub surrounds that are literally a 16 inch thick. You can literally squeeze the product, you can bounce it. I don't, I talk people out of that all day long. Um, they still buy it. It is. $80 for a whole tub and I, <laughs> um, not good, not a good choice. Right, yeah. Yep. But yeah, absolutely. Um, your first impression of the product when you're shopping for it is going to be with you for a long period of time. Um, so if you put it in your house and you don't like it in the store, you're not going to like it at home either. Um, so definitely pick one that is stronger. Musty does have a product. There's also Swanstone. There's also uh, products that you can order, but they're called solid surfaces. Resurfacing. Very wonderful um, companies out on the market that they resurface tubs. The problem with it, they don't last. It's plumbing. Um, bathtubs seem to take a lot of abuse from things falling in it to chipping to... The trick to it is you need, if you remove the drain down in the bottom, because that's the most prone area, they literally just go up to it. There's still a gap there where they're not actually making a perfect watertight system there. It does last for about seven, ten years. Um, the chemical. It's actually not. It's actually about the same price as a new tub, but without the labor. Um, so it's actually it does actually work well. Um, they do also have cans that you can do it yourself. Um, I haven't trusted it. I haven't tried it yet. I have a lot of positive feedback though. Some people come back and they say, you know what, it looks great. What's that? Doing it yourself, yes, and those are the people that come back. Um, that's one of those products that I ask. Did it work well for you? Do you like it? If it doesn't, come back and tell me, because I'm not going to tell somebody. It's hard to sell something or even say, hey, this is a great product, and you know it doesn't work. Um, the product does actually speak for itself. It does do what it's going to do. It does actually resurface the tub. It, it's fairly painless. You mix the two, two paints together. Um, it is an epoxy finish, and it does actually adhere well. The trick to it is... What's that? How does it go on? How, how? You need to um, follow the instructions, but it says you need to clean the tub. Um, you need to etch it or even um, scuff it up slightly. Um, make sure that there's no stains underneath there, no rough edges. Um, 
it literally applies on like an aerosol can. It sprays on. Yep. Yep, it is a good product though. It does last for about seven years though. So for the people who are selling their house, it's a cheap alternative to make that tub look brand new again. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Presuming that you're a good yourself right now and yep. you're going to do your bathroom remodeling yourself, uh, can you point out to us some specific items that we should be aware of so that when the inspector comes and checks our work, we can we can kind of know what what are some of the specific things he's going to be looking for? The accordion style drain when they have that drain that doesn't quite line up no. and they use this flexible little adapter to make it uh, it's cheap it's easy it's, it works well for a few years um, that's the first thing that they're going to look don't for use don't use it they will okay. literally red flag you and they'll say fix it and they call me back another 35 dollars permit and you're coming back um, that's one of the biggest things they look for the other thing is there's silicone there's acrylic caulk every toilet this is the other thing they like these need to be sealed to the floor um, and you can literally take the caulk, the silicone, um, or a DAP product is what most plumbing contractors use. It's water soluble. We can literally put it on with the little squeeze tube, take a wet sponge and we wipe it off. It looks very clean. Um, if you get it in the grout, it wipes right out. Um, but they want to see that that's sealed to the floor. It says and it in that, the... That's done after the, the, the base is set in. You, what you do is or you literally... put a bead of it around the bottom nope. first. This, that, no. We get this toilet up and working. Um, we fill a tank full of water, have the seat on, it's ready, we can flush it. What we're looking for is water seeping out from the side. Okay. Um, if you put this caulk on or something and you seal it to the floor, now you gotta cut that and actually get that up and off. And that's one more step you gotta do. So we, we actually just come by and just, it doesn't take much, but we seal them right to the floor. And that's something that they're very, that's the okay. two biggest things that they look for in plumbing. The other thing is electrical. Um, if it's in a tub area, uh, a lot of people like to put their fans or a light inside that bathroom. It needs to be sealed. Moisture cannot get at that electrical connection, whether it's a light bulb, whether it's a fan. Um, fans are not allowed in a shower area. Um, those are the real biggest things that they're looking for. Um, they will also want to, they will literally look to see that everything is um, holding, nothing's leaking. If you have a leak, they're going to say, you got to fix that and call me back. They'll kind of chuckle a little bit. Um, there's not much in the remodeling that they're really looking for because it's already passed the building codes when that house is built. Okay. So it's the biggest thing is that big flexible connector on the trap. That's the most, one of the most critical things they look for. Uh, one other thing, not in the plumbing area, but I heard that that they would like to have a separate line, electrical, a separate line that runs right from your fixtures in your bathroom right to your main fuse box. Do you know anything about that? Yes. Um, what they're actually referring to is every bathroom has to be GFI protected. That's ground fault interrupted. Um, so in case you drop your dryer into the sink, you have it full of water, you're not going to electrocute yourself. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to go back to the panel why you, or what you've heard is that's the easiest way. It's yeah. right there um, just to achieve that GFI protection. Oh, okay. um, so that's usually why they say that you go back to the panel with it. Yeah. Um, okay. It doesn't need to. It, the power coming into that outlet, can you need to just get the GFI outlet and it has to literally say GFI protection. Sure. Yep. Okay. And they can tell it'll have a reset button and a test button and they will test it to see if it's working. Um, the other thing is every bathroom um, in the state, they say that it has to be lighted and vented. Um, and that's just some, that's the other thing they're looking for. It either has to have a window or it has to have that bathroom fan. Um, that's the, basically the four things that they're looking for. Um, okay. They want to see that it's finished um, and no one's going to hurt themselves. That's the big things that they're looking for. At what point do you need, for a day for the at what point do you need a blow permit? Anything that's mechanical, plumbing, electrical, or heating. Okay. Now, for changing on the fixture, no. Okay. But if you're going to move something, yes. Okay. So, if I'm going and I'm putting in a new vanity, most likely not. Okay. Because it, it's there. It's part of it. 
It's already there. Okay. No, I, if you're just changing like for like, no, because those are already been inspected. But if you're going to move that fan on the E3 way, then Word of the wise, if you have questions, um, mind you, there's a language barrier between me and every person. What they're seeing on their job, what I'm hearing, always can be two different things. Bring a picture, take a picture with your camera or your phone, however you can do it. Um, I'm not allowed to go to your site, but I'm, I can give easy advice. Early in the morning, um, I'm the opening associate at Home Depot. I'm there from six in the morning till 2.30 every day. Um, in the morning, I have a lot more time to actually spend one-on-one -on -one time with you. If you get to the busy time of the day, I have five people staring, staring at me. And they're asking, they're like, well, why are you spending an hour with this gentleman or this person? Um, so if you can, if you run into trouble, come see me. I'll be more than happy to help. I can definitely answer questions. Oh, what's that? We're in American Boulevard, yep. yep. Do you have cards with you today? Unfortunately, I forgot. I do not. Um, um, you can call the, the line uh, right to Home Depot. It'll prompt you to the plumbing department. I carry the phone. Um, it literally goes right to my phone. I usually answer it every single day, except Sundays and Mondays. So if I can help, let me know. Thank you.